Yeah, this is Dave LaGreca of Busted Open. And when I'm not hosting Busted Open, I'm listening to DNC Digital. Make sure you subscribe right now to DNC Digital. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy D from DNC Digital. Today's guest is Dave LaGreca. Dave LaGreca is the host of Busted Open Radio on Sirius XM Radio. And uh, he is just an awesome, awesome guy. He is uh, the voice of every fan of professional wrestling. Mr. LaGreca, welcome to the show, sir. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We've been trying to do this for a while, so thank you. No, no, definitely. We we actually met at a Mission Pro Wrestling. I want to say it was locked and loaded, where you had a confrontation with Thunder Rosa, and that will be talked about in a in in just a little bit. But uh, how how do you, how do you feel about Mission Pro Wrestling, and and what do you think it'll be doing for women's wrestling in the future? Yeah, and I, you mentioned locked and loaded, um, and we saw a lot of great talent on that show. That was May first of this year, and that was the first. Mission Pro Wrestling show I've ever been a part of that I've ever really watched. And you're starting to see a lot of that talent. Genocide uh, was a part of that show. We just saw her on NWA and Power. Uh, uh, Roxy, who um, is now your Ring of Honor Women's Champion, was on that show. So um, it's a lot of young talent, a lot of established superstar superstars as well. Uh, La Rosa Negra, who I think is one of the most underrated women wrestlers out there right now, Agreed. Agreed. Uh, is absolutely fantastic. She was a part of that show and does so much with Mission Pro Wrestling. She's one of those women that I, I honestly don't understand is not signed uh, with a major company. And uh, hopefully that gets rectified soon because she deserves it. So uh, you are uh, you like to say that you're not a journalist, you're not uh you know, any part of the media, but you're just a fan that is living his dream job. So I'd like to know what was it about professional wrestling that you gravitated toward? I, I mean, if it was, uh, excuse me, if it was Gordon Soley interviewing Buzz Sawyer, or if it was going down to the rec center, William Patterson in Wayne, New Jersey, what was it about professional wrestling that you gravitated toward? Well, first of all, uh, you did your homework because those are things that I mentioned. Uh, the first thing I ever saw uh, as uh, just watching wrestling was Gordon Soley interviewing uh, Buzz Sawyer uh, back in 1982. And um, that, that, that I, I instantly fell in love with it that day, that afternoon on a Saturday uh, watching that show. And I, I've, I've been watching ever since. And it, it's changed. Obviously, the world of wrestling has changed. It's completely different than the product I grew up with. Um, when when I started watching it, they they perceived the perception was that it was real. And, you know, you weren't sure. Is this real? Is this predetermined? Now everybody knows it's predetermined. Nobody is under the illusion that what we're seeing is real. So it's changed. But my love hasn't and my love and my passion hasn't changed for pro wrestling. It's it's just it's the stories. It's the characters. There's just something about it. Um. It, it's and and somebody said this on the show. I'm trying to remember who it was, but it was a guest that we had on the air. Um, geez, I can't remember who it was, but he said that when when you're a fan, uh, no explanation is needed, and when you're not a fan, no explanation will do. It was that, and and, and wow, I was like, man, that is so like that sums it all up. Mm -hmm. Like you're right when 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 you're a pro wrestling fan you don't need to explain it. It's hard to explain and it you don't is. need to explain it to anybody. But when you're, when you're not a fan, no explanation will do. Cause you just don't get it. It's uh, not one it was, of those, uh... it's not one of those things that you go in. Ah, I like it a little bit. You know, it's, it's not, it's either you're in or you're out. And I've always been in since the first time I watched it. Yeah. I think it was Paul Heyman is like, if you don't get it, you never will. Yeah. So uh, in that, in that, uh, in that space, if somebody were to say, all right, Dave, I'm just going to sit down and watch a match with you. I want to I want to understand why you love it so much. What would be the match that you would show that jaded fan or not the jaded fan, the, the, the skeptical fan? Well, and by the way, it was Davey Richards who said that on Busted Open because I want to give credit where credit is due because it was sure. such a an amazing quote. And and in your question is a great one, too. Uh, I would probably my all time favorite match. And I said I said that on Busted Open's The Masters class we did 
a podcast on our favorite matches, classic matches. And my all-time favorite match is is Terry Funk against Ric Flair. I think it's just an amazing story. Um, and it's it's brutal. It's hard-hitting. Um, it, it You have Jim Ross and Gordon Soley doing the commentary. So it's just like a dream team. Uh, Tommy Young uh, is the referee, and he's my all-time favorite referee. Um, I know Jimmy Corderas won't like to hear that, but that's <laughs> but Tommy, Jimmy Corderas is number two. Tommy Young is number one. But I think I would show that match. Another match, uh, and this is Bully's favorite, and he talks about it in the Masters class, is Rock and Hogan uh, from WrestleMania. May 18, right. Yeah, and, and in Toronto. And that just from a pure, like, the crowd and the mm -hmm. pageantry of WrestleMania, that's another a great match. So probably those two matches would be the matches that I would show a non wrestling fan uh, because it it just is the best of both worlds when it comes to wrestling. You have one match like just the pure feel of this huge crowd going crazy, and then you have like the storytelling of a of a Terry Funk and and Ric Flair. Uh, so before you did um before you did busted open, you were on the NFL Channel and. You know, you were doing radio, but before that, I'd like to know what was the worst part part about being a bank manager. <laughs> I actually, uh, this is true true story. I actually enjoyed being a bank manager. I did not dislike that job at all. Like I wore a suit every day, and you know, I make fun of it on the show, but I actually liked it. And I lost that job because our bank got bought out. Mm. And um, that's when I said, you know what? I did as much as I could in the banking industry. I started as a, a bank teller and then worked my way up to a manager. And I just didn't feel like going that road again. So that's when I got into radio. But I, I got to admit, there's very, very few jobs that I've had in my life that I didn't like. I'm, I'm one of those people that if I'm working as a cashier at a grocery store or being a radio show host on Sirius XM, I, I go all in. Like I just become ingrained in it and I try to do the best job that I possibly can. So I actually did not mind or dislike being a bank manager. And so you moved on to Sirius XM, but it was after a certain, I caught you talking about a certain subject. Can you talk about that promo that you cut on the jets? That um, Wow, you to... you, you're impressive. Oh, you thank really you. did. You really did your homework. And um, yeah, I uh, it was the Jets and I'm not a Jet fan. Uh, yeah, you're a Cowboy fan. Which I'm a is Cowboy strange fan. Strange to me as a fellow Jersey boy, not understanding that, but I digress. Yeah. Um, a nice word of di nice use of the word digress. I was walking with somebody else who was working with NFL radio at the time, and we got stopped by a reporter for Channel 4 News. And they said, um, and like I said, the Jets had just gotten eliminated. And they said, are you Jet fans? And I, I, even though I'm not, I said yes, because it was an opportunity to be on TV. Sure. And the other person who I was with just gave this elaborate, like, X's and O's reason why the Jets lost and got eliminated from the playoffs. I knew that that was way too inside and that they were gonna, weren't going to be interested in it. So just coming off the heels of that technical, like, boring explanation, I just took the route of, like, screaming and yelling about how tough it is to be a Jets fan and what a poor performance by Brett Favre, who was the Jets quarterback at the time. And, like, mm -hmm. just – and they loved it, and that's what they used on the newscast. And – one of the higher ups at Sirius saw that rant that I did on the Jets. It was like, who is this guy? Just who is this guy? And has he ever been on the air? And have we ever given him an opportunity? And that kind of opened up the door for me to sell this show because I was already in the, I was trying to sell this show to Sirius XM, sure. this wrestling show, and they were not biting on mm. it. And it was that rant that kind of opened up the door and gave me an opportunity to do the show. So now you, you're doing the busted open uh, podcast and you, you know, you started at one hour a week and now you're doing six days a week, three hours a day. And you have 
a, a, a such a knowledgeable roundtable of people in you know rotating chairs in your in your show. But to go from one hour a week to now 18, 21 hours a week, what do you credit that longevity and what do you credit the growth to? Well, it's just not giving up. Uh, you know, I was still working with the NFL when I and I wasn't getting paid to do that hour of Busted Open or even when it became two hours. It wasn't until we moved to five days a week that it became my permanent job and I wasn't doing anything else. So it was just persistence. It was just not giving up on it. It was sacrificing time and money. And it was a lot of sacrifice, but I wouldn't change it because doing all those years of just doing it for the love of it gave me the opportunity to now do it as my career. And it's the greatest career ever. I mean, it's the greatest thing I've ever done, you know, in my career without a doubt, but it's just persistence. It's not giving up. And a lot of people, and I'm not going to name names. A lot of people within Sirius XM, a lot of people in the wrestling world were like, you're, this is, you're, you're an idiot. Why are you doing this? You're not getting paid. Like you're actually devaluing yourself in the product. And I said, no, it's, I knew it was going to work out. I knew that eventually it would gain enough traction and gain enough popularity where they couldn't help, but give me the opportunity. And that's exactly what happened. It took a long time, but that's exactly what happened. So I know I know you guys always have your your outline of what you're going to talk about on the show, and it, you know obviously mostly professional wrestling. But if you can address the busted open nation, what would you say to, to this insane army of people? It's again, I mean, it's, I mean, I love our our fans. I love the nation. It's it's still mind boggling to me that people actually care about what I say. And you mentioned the rundown and Ed Robinson, our producer prepares a rundown every day for our show. And it's a good, it's a good barometer of, of things, but I usually don't go by it. Right. I just go by feel. It's kind it of like, it doesn't really sound very constructed either. It just sounds very fluid. Yeah. And, I, and that's how I want it to sound. Um, and you know, your typical radio people don't like that. They like everything kind of Down to the segmented minute, yeah. and everything kind of written out and every everything that there's no possibility of mistakes or going off the grid. I don't like radio like that. I don't want to be held back that, all right, I have to talk about this at a certain time and I have to talk about that. And now it's time for me to stop talking about this. I kind of like the free form radio because I feel like, the people listening enjoy it because that's how they would do it. They're not, you know, the, nobody's radio. People are listening to my show. There are some radio people, but for the most part, it's just fans. So mm -hmm. I always like going back to what you said earlier, I'm the voice of the fan. So I always want to do the show as a fan, just like I'm sitting at, you know, sitting on the sofa with you watching Monday Night Raw or sitting at the bar watching a pay-per-view. Sure. That's how I want the show to go over on the air. So wrestling media has been something that's been growing exponentially like the past 15 years, or maybe even 20 years. Um, I'm interested to know, since you're in a space where you criticize what you watch, is there any other form of entertainment that you kind of know how it is to be criticized and you know how it is to criticize? So do you take it easy on other forms of entertainment like movies and television and stage work? Yeah, I guess I guess your eye, you look at things a little bit differently uh, when you're in the industry and you know how even if something doesn't come off good, there's a lot of people working hard just to get that on, you know, like movies, you know, movie might be terrible, but there was a lot of people working on that movie and they spent mm -hmm. a lot of time filming that and a lot of, somebody wrote the script and there's a lot of effort that goes into even something that we don't like. So I think there's some truth. I think there's some truth to that. I try to appreciate things a little bit more knowing that people put the time and effort in to make something. So um, I'm not as critical, I think, when it comes to certain things outside of wrestling. And then when it comes to, to wrestling itself, like you said, I'm not a journalist. I'm not a Dave Meltzer. I'm not a Mike Johnson. I'm not a Raj Geary. No, no offense to those people as Sean Ross Sapp. I'm not I'm not them. I don't mm -hmm. want to be them. I don't claim to be them. I'm a fan. I just tell you what I see, how I see it. I, I don't want to be labeled a journalist because once you label yourself a journalist, it's like, all right, I'm, I'm here. Uh, the fans are here. The performers are here and I'm here. I cover 
this sport. And you I don't put want your own to be opinion like on the pedestal, kind of. Yeah, like I don't want that. I'm just a fan. I'm just like I'm just like everybody else. I just have the platform uh, to be able to talk about it. So whenever somebody says you're a journalist, well, I, I always say no, I'm not. I'm not a journalist. I'm a fan. That I'm a radio show host, and I'm I'm a radio show host that's a fan of pro wrestling and does a pro wrestling show. But I am not a journalist or a reporter. Um, here's a here's a question that I have for you, and um, you can t- you know, give me your take on it. I had this conversation when it when we talk about WWE and AEW a while ago. WWE was just scooping everybody up, and there was some criticism as to why they're hiring everybody. Now AEW has come up. WWE are, is releasing people and they're mad at WWE, but I say, well, if they're not being used correctly, allow them to go somewhere where they'll be used correctly. Do you feel professional wrestling is fixing itself and balancing itself with all these names that possibly weren't being used to their full potential now going over to another company? Yeah, I think WWE and, you know, people don't like to hear it, myself included, but WWE is not a pro wrestling company or sports entertainment. Exactly. Company. I say that all the time. So it it's like, time. It's like they it's like they have a pool of actors. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to I'm going to relate mm-hmm. it to movies. They have a pool of actors and they have a movie and that movie, you know, doesn't necessarily need the best actor. They need somebody that's going to fit the role of the story that they're telling right now. And if they don't have uh, stories for the actors that they have, they let those actors go doesn't matter how good of an actor that they are it's just that we don't have a role for you in this movie we don't have a role for you in this tv show it's the same thing with the wwe when it comes to wrestlers they have certain stories that they're telling and they have certain wrestlers that they want to use as characters in those stories so they may not have a place we were talking about this person today on the show ricochet ricochet is a phenomenal athlete an amazing pro wrestler but it's not what the WWE is looking for right now. So they don't use Ricochet or if they use Ricochet, it's, you know, with the 24 seven championship. Sure. So yes, it's, it's like a football team, football team drafts, amazing football talent, amazing athletes, but not everybody that they draft is going to be able to fit their team or be able to fit the offense that they run or the defense that they run. And they might trade that player or cut that player, but somebody they cut, might work perfectly in another offense on another team. So, you know, that's the same thing with AEW. They're not taking every wrestler that the WWE lets go. They're taking the certain talents that they like and that they know is going to be over with their audience. You know, they didn't scoop up Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman is still out there, you know, but to AEW and their fan base, they probably don't want to see a Braun Strowman. So they'll go after an Adam Cole, a, D- a Brian right. Danielson, uh, you know, a Ruby Soho. Those are the wrestlers that they're going to go after because they know it's going to fit what they do and what their fan base wants to see. You know, when you mentioned Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan, they've been so um, they've been so gracious about their exit from WWE and, and they've never badmouthed them. And they, they say it's very important to them that they that people understand that they had a great time in WWE. And they just decided to move on. How important were those two men, as revered as they are, saying that to such a divided uh, wrestling fan base? Well, I think it's important because I think it might get WWE fans to watch AEW. If they liked Adam Cole and if they liked Daniel Bryan, then maybe because they're not bad mouthing the company. All right. You know, what? I'm going to watch them with AEW um, and they have no reason to complain. And it's and it sounds better. You know, they're not they didn't go to AEW because the WWE didn't want them and they didn't go to AEW because they were so disgruntled that they hated the WWE. No, they liked the opportunity of going to AEW and I thought it would be a bitter fit for them. That's so great. So there's no hidden agenda on why they made the move. They just wanted to be a part of AEW. I think that looks so good for them. And again, like, why not try to get some of that WWE fan base to watch your product exactly we're going to wrap things up here i thank you for your time sir but uh one last question i have um when you're pursuing a passion and it's something that seems out of reach but you you maintain persistence and you finally reach it and now it becomes your occupation do you find yourself developing a different passion now that this is your occupation no um i actually take it and then take it to another degree like 
you know, forever I wanted the show to go five days a week. And then it was all I, it was like tunnel vision. This is what I want. Then it became five days a week. And then I wanted it to be my full-time job. I didn't want to do NFL anymore. I just wanted to strictly focus on Bust It Open. Then that happened. Then I wanted it to grow. The podcast, the, the, the Saturday show, and those things happen. I'm always looking at what I have and I appreciate it. I never forget the fact that I'm doing something that I love and I appreciate it, but I never lose that like eye of the tiger, so to speak. I want it to get bigger and better. So I still have that. I never lost my drive. Mm. There's always ways to improve and make things bigger and better, but still appreciate what you have. So I think it's a good balance of right now. I appreciate what I have, but I'm not satisfied with what I have. It's good to appreciate, but you should never be satisfied because once you're satisfied, that's when you're going to lose your footing and that's when you're going to lose your grip and you don't want that to happen. It really needs uh, to be a balance between those two. Awesome. Um, Now, before I let you go yesterday, I was talking to Thunder Rosa, the woman who invaded your house and spent time with your wife and um, tied you up and gave you a wedgie. And she was just asking me, we, we, you know, we're, we're friends and we were conversing and she's like, who's your next interview? I was like, Hey, it's actually Dave. She's like, tell him something for me. And I'm going to quote what she said. Tell him that he is a punk ass bitch. Your response, sir. So she called me a punk. I see this is this is where I think you, after talking to me and your audience, realizes that Thunder Rosa is not the person that you think she is. You think that she is just this amazing, kind person. But there is a there is a fire like this anger and hatred that she has towards me, which runs very, very deep. I don't know why. You know, I'm willing it, it to. It may have like, been you trying to hit her with the bottle, sir. But, but you know what? I th- maybe, maybe. But if she would have just maybe. said thank you and, you know, said thank you for the house, for Mission Pro Wrestling, and I'm sorry for the thing. If She's just not willing to do that. She's hard headed. So I'm not going to say any ill will towards her, but she's not the person you think you know. She's an evil, manipulative, bad person. And I think I've proven that time and time again. That remains to be seen. I am on, uh, I'm in the middle. I'm wearing, I'm, I'm wearing your shirt trying to pander to you and the interview. I know. So and listen, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to ask you to take sides. I would I, never I do would. that. She would, but I would never do that. I would never ask you to take sides. Mr. LaGreca, where can they find you on social media? And can you tell the lovely audience how to listen to you on Busted Open? Sure. Uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, which I have to do a better job with. But go to at David LaGreca one at David LaGreca, the number one. Um, and you listen to Busted Open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time on Sirius XM Fight Nation Channel 156. And please subscribe to the Busted Open podcast available on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify and Pandora. Awesome. Mr. LaGreca, I thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'm a huge fan and I am uh, even more proud to call you an acquaintance and possibly even a friend. And um, also go to uh, prowrestlingtees.com to buy my merchandise and go to podswag.com slash busted open for busted open merchandise. Awesome. Uh, this is D. You can find me at DNC Digital on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, everybody have a great day and take care of yourself.